Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Comic Book Nostalgia. I'm CB Nostalgia, and I thought we could talk some Young Justice. Well, as many of you know, we've already finished up Season 4 of Young Justice Phantoms, and we're right in the middle of Young Justice Targets. I thought with the season closed out and no new episodes for us, it was a great time to start our story arc series. Each one of the story arcs in this season contains some really important details that not only led to the finale of the season, but opened up other storytelling avenues that really merit some serious discussion. I thought what we could do is look at each individual arc and do at least one, maybe more videos about some of the story and details that came out of these individual stories. We are totally open to suggestions, so make sure you hit those comment buttons down below and give me some of your observations. I really would like to know what part of these individual arcs and the direction they took you found the most interesting and what you would like to talk about. Now, I thought to open up we could talk a little bit about Mars, the Martian caste system, and the fallout from Malifalax obtaining of Durla from Darkseid. But first, let's rewind the tape a little bit. We spent some serious time at the beginning of the year on Mars. The first story arc was focused on Miss Martian, Superboy, and Beast Boy headed to the Red Planet for a wedding. The marriage between Connor and Magan was finally going to happen, and it was going to be in a Martian setting. But once they arrived, things began to unravel quickly. Now, needless to say, this was not a friendly reception, and many of the same problems that we have here on Earth between people seemed very common on Mars. This is where a lot of problems have derived and really drove an end segment of the season that I think is going to be important in the future. Now, just to review, green Martians on Mars make up the majority, with white Martians considered second-class citizens and red Martians considered royalty. Now, unfortunately, prejudice is pretty much just based on skin color, and there is little discrimination against the green offspring of mixed parents. Now, technically, there is a fourth kind of Martian, the yellow Martians, and these are the sorcerer, priests, and priestesses. There are no yellow-born Martians, but as part of becoming a sorcerer, priest, or priestess, a suitable member of any caste takes part in a ceremony and becomes a yellow Martian. Now also, interestingly, Martians live a really long time and can reach a lifespan of up to 300 years. They actually age approximately three times slower than humans do on Earth, with 48 Earth years considered adolescence. Now, like we were saying, despite zero biological difference between Martians except their skin color, the white Martians are, are an oppressed minority on Mars, and it feels all too familiar. They often live in the slums of the Red Planet, are subject to racial slurs that are so common on Earth, and also police discrimination. Additionally, mixed caste marriages on the Red Planet are considered deeply taboo within the current Martian culture. Now, fortunately, times were starting to change when we entered Season 1. The former king, King Staruna Jax, attempted to create a more equal society. But if you remember, he passed away, and many of those reforms were being rolled back by his widow. But as we saw, his son, Prince Jem Jax, continued to argue for his agenda and try to end some of the racial inequality on the Red Planet. Now, sadly, there are white Martians who are willing to use violence to bring about change, and Malphalak is an infamous Ashin revolutionary, often called a terrorist. Now, if you remember correctly, he actually attempted to kill all the green and red Martians with that gene bomb, but ultimately he failed. His actions were pretty extreme, and I don't actually think represented most of the white Martian population, but in a world with this much oppression, you can find some sympathy for his actions. Now, if you remember right, by the end of the season, Darkseid had given him the pristine world of Durla, and he was going to use this to make a new home for white Martians in reward for his faithful service to his Dark Master. Now, as many of you know, either via the show or the comic, Durla was the home of Legion of Superhero member Chameleon Boy. He actually told us a story during the finale episode that a decade after being released, General Zod and the rest of his Phantom Zone army actually conquered his home planet. Now what happens next is pretty up in the air. It is very clear that Malphalak now intends to make it a safe haven for white Martians and allow white Martians to leave Mars and come resettle there. But this begs a lot of questions. The real question is how many will actually join him? Like I said, not all white Martians are on the same page. Although Malphalak may have been right on issue in principle, his methods are very unacceptable to a large portion of the white Martian population. 
he really is a true villain and ultimately will be no better than the oppressors they seek liberation from. Now, quite honestly, just like we've seen on our planet, generational trauma will make this whole process even more difficult to predict. But I imagine by Season 5, and we need that Season 5, we will start to see some indication of what most of the White Martians are choosing and, more interestingly, its impact on Mars itself. There is also the issue of Durla. Like we said, Durla was the home of Chameleon Boy species and we found out they were ultimately booted from the planet by General Zod. Now, he seemed to indicate this was within his lifetime. And, since Chameleon Boy is from a thousand years from now, you have to ask yourself if those events are still part of the timeline. There is a bit of a time loop going on with many of these characters, but the question and the fate of Darla is kind of up in the air based on this potential change. Many people are also asking another really big question as it relates to Chameleon Boy's species on Durla. Does this event make Chameleon Boy's people descendants of the white Martians that are now migrating to the planet? Like I said, it's not that long ago, only a thousand years. And, and as far as cosmic evolution goes, that's not even a blink. But they do have the shape-shifting powers. And we did see that new base forms can be established for Martians. This was actually part of Miss Martian's storyline for a little while, and it makes me wonder what's ultimately going to happen there on Darla, and if Chameleon Boy is actually a long descendant of a white Martian. That would be an interesting way to make it full circle, something very unique to Earth-16, but not part of the standard DC mythos. Now, obviously, we're going to do a lot more of these little discussions about the various arcs of Young Justice. Some of the ones coming up include the second arc, which focused on Artemis, but also ended on a little cliffhanger with three ninjas, Jade, Jason, and Onyx, as well as the seven cities of Atlantis. We also have a second part to this series that relates to Greg Wiseman, the White Martians, and how he has a little bit of regret in how they were created. You might find that pretty interesting and a potential major change to this mythos framework. So make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of those videos. Also, this is the time to stick with those hashtags. Renew Young Justice, Young Justice Season 5, and Save Earth 16. We gotta keep the pressure up on Warner Brothers and HBO Max if we want to see more of Young Justice and get some of these Martian questions answered. But until we know more, what did you guys think of the various social and caste problems that existed on Mars? And did you feel like these were easy to relate to parallels to Earth or sort of ham-fisted into the series? I'm really curious what you guys think there. Tell me what you think in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you hit like, click subscribe, and if you don't ring that bell, you're not going to get any updates. Peace.